guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another Christmas story reading. But today's video is actually going to have two of them because I ran out of time yesterday and did not get a chance to film or post the one from yesterday. So it's going to have two books in it. So the first one I'm going to be reading is Christmas in Neverland. Peter Pan, Christmas in Neverland. Wendy sighed as she looked around the Lost Boys hideout. Neverland is wonderful, she said, but it's almost Christmas back home. I do wish we weren't missing it. Christmas, Peter asked. What's a Christmas? Why, Christmas is the most special time of the year, Wendy said. There's always a beautiful tree covered with lights. And lots of presents, Michael chimed in. Don't forget the Christmas crackers, John added. They make such a wonderful kaboom when they explode. But most important, Christmas is time to show people how much you care for them, Wendy finished. Hearing Wendy talk about Christmas gave Peter an idea. You know, he said, handing Wendy a basket, a bunch of shells washed up on the other side of Mermaid Lagoon. If you hurry, you can get some before the waves take them back to sea. Goodness, Wendy exclaimed, if I leave right now, I can be back before dark. As soon as Wendy was gone, Peter gathered the boss boys around him. We're going to surprise Wendy, he announced. We'll have Christmas right here in Neverland. But how, John asked. Peter grinned. Follow me, he said. Peter and the Lost Boys hurried to the village where their friend Tiger Lily lived. We need presents for Christmas, Peter told the princess, and an extra special gift for Wendy. Do you have any ideas? I know just the thing, Tiger Lily replied. While Tiger Lily helped Peter make a beautiful beaded necklace for Wendy, her father taught the Lost Boys how to make arrowheads. Everyone had fun making their gifts. Peter and the Lost Boys thanked Tiger Lily and, it, and her father. Then they rushed off to keep preparing their Christmas surprise. The boys took the gifts back to their hideout. Then they set off on a raid on the of the Jolly Roger. Peter, why are we here? John asked as they hid in the pirate ship's sails. Surely these savage buccaneers know nothing about Christmas. That's true, but they know an awful lot about making things explode, Peter said. I'm going to swipe some powder from their cannons to make our Christmas crackers. Captain Hook was so busy watching for the crocodile that he didn't notice Peter duck into the Jolly Roger storeroom. Moments later, Peter burst onto the deck, carrying a bulging bag of powder. He tossed a handful right in the Captain Hook's face, making the pirates sneeze. Thanks for the powder, you codfish, Peter Pan shouted. I'll get you for this pan, Captain Hook yelled as their boys raced away, laughing. Next, Peter and the Lost Boys scouted the forest for the perfect Christmas tree. But when they got the tree back to their hideout, Peter frowned. This tree doesn't look so special, he said. That's just because it doesn't have any decorations yet, John assured him. The Lost Boys went to work. Soon, every branch of the tree was decorated with buttons and acorns, arrowheads and seashells, and long garlands of flowers. In no time, the Lost Boys transformed the hideout. Beneath the festive tree stood piles of presents and stacks of homemade Christmas crackers. But something was still missing. The lights, Peter exclaimed. Where are the lights? We may have to do without them, John began. But before he could finish, a clever grin flashed across Peter's face. I'll find a way to make our tree light up, he vowed, or my name isn't Peter Pan. Tinkerbell started jingling, but Peter interrupted her. No time for chit-chat, Tink, he said. Let's go. Peter Pan and Tinkerbell flew through the sky, racing the setting sun all the way to Mermaid Lagoon. The mermaids waved at them from the glittering water. Peter, they cried, come tell us one of your stories. But Peter didn't have time for stories. Wendy would be home soon, and the Christmas tree still needed lights. The mermaids shook their heads. I don't think we can help with that, one said when Peter explained what he needed. Why not, Peter asked. I've seen the way a Mermaid Lagoon lights up at night. If you let me borrow your lights, I'll bring them back tomorrow. Mermaid Lagoon lights up because our fish glow in the dark, another mermaid explained as the fish swam by. The fish won't glow if they leave the water. By the time Peter and Tinkerbell got home, twilight had fallen. There's got to be some way to light that tree, Peter said. Tink put her hands on her hips and jingled at him. Peter wasn't listening. Now, now, Tink, I'm trying to think, he said. Tinkerbell stormed into her lantern, sending flashes of light around the clearing. That gave Peter an idea. He hollered for the Lost Boys. 
Fireflies, Peter announced. We'll use fireflies to light our Christmas tree. The Lost Boys leapt into the air, catching fireflies in their hands. And when they, But when they took the fireflies over to the Christmas tree, the glowing bugs flew away. Peter sat down on an old stump. It's no use, he said defeated. Christmas is ruined. Now, now, it's still a very nice tree, John said, even if it is getting too dark to see it properly. Tinkerbell peeked out of her lantern. Maybe now Peter would listen to her. She marched right up to him and started jingling and jangling as loudly as she could. Peter Pan's eyes grew wide. You mean you can make the tree light up? He exclaimed. Why didn't you say so before? Moments later, Wendy returned to an unusually dark hideout. Hello, she called. Where is everyone? Suddenly, a lovely glow filled the room as the Christmas tree began to sparkle with pixie dust. Wendy gasped as Peter Pan and the Lost Boys burst out of their hiding place. Merry Christmas, Wendy, they cheered. Wendy beamed and gathered the Lost Boys around her. Christmas had come to Neverland after all. So that is the story for the third night of our reading. I'm also going to read the one from the fourth night because, as I said before, I did fall behind. So the next one we're doing is Merry Christmas, Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. One snowy Christmas Eve, Winnie the Pooh looked up and down, in and out, and all around his house. I have a tree, some candles, and lots of decorations, he said to himself, but something seems to be missing. Suddenly a soft knocking sound on Pooh's door. Perhaps whatever Pooh was missing was just outside. Pooh opened the door. A small snowman stood shaking on his front doorstep. <laughs> Hello, Pooh. The snowman said through chattering teeth in a quavery, qu shivery, quivery, but oh so familiar voice. I do like Christmas, but I wish my ears wouldn't get so very cold. Pooh invited the snowman in. After much melting by Pooh's cozy fireplace, the snowman looked less like a snowman and more like Pooh's best friend, Piglet. My, Pooh said, happy to see a friend where there used to be a snowman. My, Piglet said, now warm enough to notice Pooh's glowing Christmas tree. Are you going to string popcorn to decorate your tree? He asked. I had popcorn and string, Pooh admitted, looking at the popcorn crumbs. But now there's only string. That's okay, Piglet said for a laugh. We can use the string to wrap the presents you're giving. At that, something began to tickle the brain of the little bear. I forgot to get presents, Pooh exclaimed. Don't worry, Pooh, Piglet said, trying to smile bravely. It's the thought that counts. Soon, Piglet left for his own home. He had his own Christmas preparations to finish. Pooh didn't know what to do about the forgotten presents, but he didn't know where to find help. Hello, Pooh called, knocking on Christopher Robin's doors. Come in, Pooh, Christopher Robin said, smiling as he let his friend inside. Why do you look so sad on the most wonderful night of the year? In the excitement of seeing Christopher Robin's Christmas decorations, Pooh forgot all about the presents again. What are those? he asked, pointing to some stockings that were hanging above the fireplace. Those are stockings to hold Christmas presents, Christopher Robin explained to his friend. Now Pooh was even sadder. He had just remembered that he didn't have presents or stockings. Luckily, the bear of little brains was smart enough to have a good friend. Christopher Robin happily gave Pooh stockings for himself and all his other friends. Pooh thanked Christopher Robin and hurried off to deliver the stockings. I will get everyone presents later, Pooh said to himself. The stockings come first. With a small note that said, From Pooh, he left stockings on Piglet, Tigger, Rabbit, Eeyore, Gopher, Kanger, Roo, and, and Owl. Later, back in his own comfy house, Pooh tried to think of presents for his friends. But sleepy Pooh's thinking soon turned into dreaming. The next morning, Pooh was awakened by a big and bouncy knock at his door. Sleepily, Pooh opened the door. Merry Christmas, Pooh, his friend shouted. Pooh was about to apologize for not having any presents for his friend. When Piglet, Tigger, Rabbit, Gopher, Eeyore, Kangaroo, and Owl started thanking him. No more cold ears with my new stocking cap, Piglet said. My stripity sleeping bag is Tiggerific, Tigger explained. So is my new carrot cover, Rabbit chimed in. Gopher thanked Pooh for the rock collecting bag, and Eeyore switched his toasty tail warmer with a slight smile. Owl announced that his Windsock was perfect for figuring out which way the breeze was blowing, and Kanger and Roo loved their new scarves. Something awfully nice is going on, Pooh said, but I'm not sure how it happened. 
It's called Christmas, Buddy Bear, Tigger replied. Then everyone gave their presents to Pooh. Lots of pots of delicious sweet honey. Surrounded by his friends and his favorite tasty treat, Pooh had to agree. Christmas. What a sweet thought indeed. Alright guys. Thank you for watching. Stop by back stop back by tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night for the next installment in the series. Alright, I'll see you guys later. Bye.